Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Moto Mangi. Today, I'm going to do a response to a video that another moto vlogger made recently. His name is Chopper Fett. Chopper Fett made a video about moto vlogging as a career. Or rather, he posed the question Would you want to moto vlog as a career? And meaning, would you want to do YouTube as a career? Go YouTube full time and try to make a living wage from YouTube and that kind of thing, but more, but more specifically from moto vlogging on YouTube and earn enough money to make a living wage, so to speak. Earn a living, pay your bills, <laughs> that kind of stuff. I thought it was an interesting topic and a lot of the comments on Chopper Fitz's video really made me want to make this video as a follow-up sort of because, well, let me get into it. So this is actually a question that I get asked a lot by viewers. Over the past two years, I've gotten this question quite a number of times from many different viewers. The question is, am I planning to do YouTube as a career or turn Moto Mangi into a, a, a job, you know? Was that my plan from the beginning of creating this channel? And it ties into what Chopper Fett was talking about because I think from reading a lot of the comments on Chopper Fett's video, and also from talking to viewers I've had too, who asked me that question. I think a lot of viewers who aren't moto vloggers sort of think it's fairly easy to make money off YouTube, I guess, or like, or like choosing to turn YouTube into a career is simply a choice. Like I'm gonna moto vlog full time now and make lots of money, but that's not how it works in reality. The truth is doing YouTube as a career it takes a lot of work. It's not something that just happens. Well, okay. It doesn't normally happen, it just happen. <laughs> sure, some people get lucky and go viral and they make, you know, get lots of views on YouTube and they make lots of money just from pure luck, but you're talking like a half percent of all people on YouTube that happens to. If you want to realistically make money on YouTube, you really gotta put a lot of work and effort into it. And that's even more so if you're moto vlogging because some types of videos, some genres on YouTube make money easier than others. Like take financing, for example. Finance YouTube channels are one of the most popular YouTube genres, mainly because it's one of the easiest ways to make money on YouTube. You look at YouTubers like Meet Kevin or Graham Stephan or uh, Financial Education, they'll put out a video a day or a video every two days, several videos per week though, easily. And they do it from basically one room in their house normally. And a lot of them make so much money that they can hire editors to work for them. So they just film the videos and then they have an editor or someone else who puts the video together and posts it and everything and does all the tag work, the tag words and stuff, and it makes the thumbnails and everything. And that's how they can churn out lots of videos. It's all about quantity. And yeah, they have quality too, but quantity is how those financing YouTube people make a lot of money to get lots of views for lots of videos. But for moto vlogging, most moto vloggers do it themselves. They're one person shows. And yeah, some larger channels have crews, filming crews and stuff. Nice road glide. But for every her two wheels or wall terrific, there's hundreds of Moto Mangies and Chopper Fets. Small time Moto Vloggers who have a, a thousand or so subscribers, maybe a little more than that. Get maybe a hundred or 200 views per video. Moto Vloggers like us, the small guys are more common, far more common on YouTube than the doodle on motorcycles and Chase on two wheels and that kind of stuff. But like her two wheels, she didn't just get a big channel automatically. She puts a lot, she puts lots of work in. She works, you know, she makes several videos per week. She really studies like the keywords and the 
SEO stuff and the thumbnails and everything and she does sponsorships and networking and all that stuff. She spends a lot of time doing Instagram and TikTok and Facebook and stuff. And if you want to succeed on YouTube, meaning if you want to earn a living wage on YouTube, you kind of have to do that kind of stuff. Yeah, you might get lucky and just coast into a, a viral channel. <laughs> But typically that's not going to happen. It's going to require work. Like just look at Doodle on a Motorcycles channel. In the past year, she's quit her job and gone full-time YouTube. Meaning she's putting a lot more time into her channel and her videos and editing and that kind of thing. And it, look at her channel's you know, subscriber count and viewership. It's really going up high over the past year. It's, it's ballooned, it's rocketed. And it just happened. Doodle put the work in. So back to Chopper Fett's original question, would you want to go full-time motovlogging on YouTube? And I see a lot of people saying, yeah, sure, they'd love to, why not? Get paid for riding a motorcycle, that kind of thing. But unless you're a motovlogger, you probably don't realize how much work going full-time YouTube entails. And by work, I mean how much non-riding work, <laughs> you know? It's easy to think you just do a lot of riding and filming while you're riding and put it on YouTube and bam, you've got an instant YouTube success channel that makes lots of money, but that's not the reality. It's not how it goes. That's part of the reason why I keep my channel small. Well, okay, I don't keep my channel small. <laughs> I'm not holding it down on purpose or anything. Would I love to have a big successful YouTube channel in Moto Mangi? What? Would I love for Moto Maggie to make lots of money? Of course I would, who wouldn't? It'd be awesome to make lots of money for riding motorcycles and filming and editing and stuff. That'd be great. <laughs> but in case you haven't noticed, I put out one video per week on Moto Maggie. Yeah, there have been a few weeks for the past two years where I've had two videos per week, but not usually. Those are the exception, not the rule. For the most part, I put out one video per week. At the time I'm filming this video, I actually have three videos uploaded to YouTube Studio ready to post live, ready to go, you know, ready to make public. I just, I hold them off to put out one per week, so now I have a three week window where I don't have to do any motovlog editing or filming. I can just relax and enjoy myself for three weeks and I have to make another video to put back on YouTube. And I like that kind of laid back attitude towards Moto Mangi. For me, motovlog is a hobby. I'm doing it for fun, not to earn a living because doing it to earn a living requires a lot of work. And I do more riding without filming than I do riding while I'm filming. And I like that balance. <laughs> I like riding for the fun of it. Yeah, I love filming while I'm riding too. It's, I find motovlogging fun. I like the editing, I like all the, I like the whole thing, but I like it as a hobby. I like it once in a while. If I went to go full time and make two or three videos per week, that would take a lot more effort, a lot more work. And my fear is that would turn motorcycle riding into a job that becomes laborious. And I don't want to turn motorcycle riding into a job that feels laborious. Like for example, there's a large motovlogger, a, a motovlogger from a large channel I talked to once in a while. I won't say her name, but she asked me a, a while ago about my Goldwing. Her husband was interested in buying a, a new Goldwing like I ride, so she asked me questions and we got to talking about I'm talking shop, so to speak, about motor vlogging and life, that kind of thing, whatever. But her channel is much larger than mine. And at one point over the course of you know the past year or so, she asked me, and she wasn't being mean, but she asked me what keeps me motivated to keep going with my channel being as small as it is. Because I don't get a lot of money for Moto Mangi. You know, my channel is growing very slowly. It's not growing with leaps and bounds. Whereas this motor vlogger, she's been motor vlogging a little longer than me, but not much longer. But her channel's like, you know, many orders of magnitude larger than mine. Let's put it that way. <laughs> much, much larger than Moto Mangi. So she's making decent money from Moto Vlogging. And she says, you know, that keeps her, keeps her motivated to keep going. That makes her motivated to make more videos and to improve, you know, her editing skills, that kind of thing. And she was, she was wondering what keeps me motivated, which is a small channel that's not doing so well. And I told her, I, in my opinion, 
Mono Mankey's doing fantastic. <laughs> I think he's doing very well. I mean, sure, I'm a small channel, but the fact that I'm already monetized two years into Moto Mangi, I'm tickled pink. I think it's fantastic. I mean, when I started Moto Mangi, I really didn't think I'd be getting paid for YouTube for a couple of years, like three or four, possibly. In hindsight, I was probably naive. I don't know. I think most channels get monetized within the first two or three years. Moto Mangi might have gone a little faster than others, but not much. But since being monetized, Moto Mangi hasn't grown much at all. I mean, very slowly. I'm gaining like 10, 20 subs per, per month. I've kind of made the same amount of money per month from YouTube as I had since the first time I was monetized, so it hasn't been getting any better, but it's still, it's something, you know? I mean, I think it's great. I mean, making any kind of money for a hobby is pretty slick in my opinion. I started Moto Mangi more as an artistic challenge than a career path. So to me, personally, Moto Mangi is doing great. It's been a huge success. Part of my drive for Moto Mangi is not to make more money at Moto Mangi, from Moto Mangi, but to get better at making videos for Moto Mangi, you know? I mean, I want to improve my editing skills and make better videos, and whether or not the audience grows is kind of secondary to me having fun doing it. <laughs> Honestly, it, that might sound strange from a YouTube point of view, but it's the truth. I'm more concerned with the challenge of Moto Mangi that I am the, the financial success of it. Now, people like Blockhead and Her Two Wheels and Doodle and Motorcycle, they decided to, get, to try and go full-time YouTube and make tens of thousands of dollars per year or more from motor vlogging. And that's great, that's wonderful. All the power to them. But they're also putting in a lot of work to do that. And they're, you know, 40, 50, 60 hours a week is what they're putting into their channels. Probably more than that for some of them, some of the big channels. And yeah, I think I'd rather enjoy life a little bit. I don't think I'm ready to uh, turn Motovlog into that much work. Although I will admit, part of me would like to juice up Moto Mangi's output for like a half year or a year and really push working on my channel hard, two, three videos a week kind of thing, just to see what would happen, purely for the challenge of it. Not really because I want to turn Moto Mangi into a living career or a job, but just mainly because I would like to give it an effort and see how it goes. And maybe I'll do that someday. I don't know. Maybe one of these years I'll get the gumption to double my efforts or triple my efforts for Moto Mangi and, and really try and make lots of videos and that kind of stuff. But for right now, I'm not really feeling it. For right now, I like Moto Mangi as a hobby. Now, Topper Fett also posed the question, if you could choose one thing to do in life to make a living off of, what, what would that be? And he correlated that to the YouTube as a career, motor vlogging as a career, because a lot of people would choose motor vlogging as a career as their, as their dream job, so to speak. Like, if they could do one thing for a living, they would love to ride a motorcycle and get paid for it. And that's what struck me. A lot of the comments on Topper Fett's video saying that, but I got the gist that a lot of the viewers don't realize it's not simply riding and filming. There's a lot more work to it than just that. If it was simply riding and filming and throwing up a YouTube and having the money r roll in automatically, <laughs> that'd be awesome. <laughs> that'd be great. I'd be on board for that in a second. I'm gonna turn here. The reality is that Motor vlogging as a career is like 10% filming and riding and 90% other stuff. Editing, thumbnails, SEO work, tags, descriptions, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, networking, all that stuff. So if that sounds appealing to you, then go for it. <laughs> Motor vlogging as a career is for you then. So that's pretty much it, I guess. Motor vlogging as a career, while it sounds fun and awesome, it's less, it's a lot less so than it might appear to be to people who haven't done motor vlogging on their own yet. To a lot of motor vloggers, they realize how much work is into it. For Moto Mangi, motor vlogging as a hobby is a lot more appealing. But maybe, maybe someday I'll decide to go a little more hardcore with Moto Mangi and try and make Moto Mangi more successful. But currently I'm pretty happy with Moto Mangi. I get paid every month from Google AdSense, but it's not enough money to pay all the bills or that or to 
that kind of thing, but it's enough to pay for gas for the bike, to pay for insurance for the bike, to pay for the title every year, to, and to have a little left over every year. So for me right now, Motovlog is paying for the bike and for all the gas and for all the rides. And that's pretty awesome. But it's not paying all my bills or buying me new cars or it's not buying me houses. I can't buy a Ferrari. You know, it's not doing that kind of stuff. Motomig is not that successful. <laughs> not even close. And I'm not really willing to put in the kind of work to make it that successful. So I guess that's it. I guess that's all I wanted to talk about. So let me ask you, the viewer, would you want to do motovlogging as a career? Or YouTube as a career? Does that interest you? Or are you already doing YouTube as a career? Let me know down in the comment section. Or ask any questions, if you have any. But on that note, I'm going to turn the cameras off and turn the radio on. So thanks for watching. Time for me to enjoy riding for the sake of riding rather than filming while I'm riding. <laughs> so take care, ride safe, and see you next time. Man, this road's nice back here. I really have no idea where I'm at. I gotta trace back with watch this video on Google Maps to see how I got here, because I have no idea where I am, but this is lovely. <laughs> this road's fantastic. Might have to come back here and do a road spotlight on whatever this road is when I find out whatever this road is. 